Amen. You may have your seat. I'm going to go everywhere because I'm an Aborigine man. Uh, I wander around, but this morning I just want to share a few thoughts about these two types of trees that are in the book of Genesis chapter 2. And our reading is from Genesis, and if you're looking on Facebook, uh, CDs and that, we welcome you this morning at Tabernacle of Yeshua and uh, just be a part of the journey with us that the word of the Lord may, uh, may richly bless you today. And we know the word will bless you. Amen. Because he is a blessing to each and every one of us. Amen. God bless you this morning. My reading is in the book of Genesis chapter 2 verse 9. And out of the ground the Lord God made every tree to grow that is pleasant to his sight and good for food. The tree of life was also in the midst of the garden and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Amen. And it says there it was pleasant to his sight. And this morning if there's ever a time or a generation that we've got to understand we're moving quickly into this day. Into the narrow way in Matthew 7 verse 13 it speaks about the narrow entry into the path of life. And this morning uh, these two trees, one is good and one is bad. Good nature, bad nature. These are the same trees that challenge you and I today in life. And it's not in a condemning way, but a lot of people come in and they taste the goodness of God, but they seem to want to go back and taste the things uh, 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 of the old nature, the old ways and that. But God don't want it in this feast. We have to make a choice. Where are we feeding from? Are we feeding from the tree of life or are we feeding on the tree of knowledge of good and evil? Speaks of bad nature. Speaks of just going back and seeing if the scene has changed. Nothing will change with this kind of nature unless they gravitate to the nature and the life of Christ. Can I get an amen this morning? He's in the midst of the church. You are the trees of life this morning. And you and I should send off a fragrance in the midst of every circumstances that we face in life. I'm bringing a fragrance in the midst of adversity. I'm bringing a fragrance in the midst of this nature that always keep rising up in my life that I may set a fragrance of the anointing of Christ that would dispel everything that is not of a good nature. But as we journey along this morning, we have got to be that tree that is setting off a fragrance in the midst of people that are perishing. Don't be a part of the nature and go along with what everyone says because you have the weapon to combat that uh, kind of nature, that kind of language that they are speaking. In the midst of that, you should be able to diffuse that with the fragrance of the Lord. You're bringing life in the midst of adversity. But sometimes we gravitate to that old nature and we try and work it out. We try and figure it out. No, cuz I can understand cuz, yeah, I know you're going through a battle. And even in my own language, I need to speak life over my body and saying, Lord, I feel the resurrection life of Christ in me. The hope of glory this morning. These natures, it can cause bitterness, ugliness, all that. Why do you say that, Pastor? 
In this feast, God is not looking how good you dress up, how good your house is. He's coming to see if the character or the fruit of him that is on your tree this morning. Amen. He knows you by your fruits. Your fruits and attribute will always display good or bad. How do I get out of a situation? How do I speak life over my body? When sickness comes, I tell you what, oh, I was tested last night. I was in so much pain like my stomach was on fire. And I'm crying like a big sook, crying there trying to hold uh, Pastor Selena. I was saying, I feel like I'm going to die in this bed. But that's not life. He went back to the tree uh, that has a nature that says, you'll always be sick in a lower dimension, speaking that over our lives. What we speak, we, we, we get it. So this morning, if there's any encouragement you are the trees of righteousness to diffuse fragrance of the Lord in the midst of adversity. You know, pastor always talk about them yo-yos. One Sunday they hear, oh, I love you, Lord. Don't see them for three or four months. God's not looking for those that cannot endure to the end. You've got to endure to the end. You've got to go where life is. See, everyone thinking, oh, you know, the world's going, we don't have to worry about anything. But I'm telling you, this nature is rising over the earth. How does the church deal with it? Speak the word. It's going to be a better day for this church. It's going to be a better day for the school. We're going to see growth coming. You're speaking life in the midst of adversity. You're speaking to the storms of life and saying, be still and know that he is God. So you'll only know victory when you go through a battle. A lot of us quit halfway. But in this feast, there's no delay. How important that you and I have got to focus more on our lives and what God is doing in my life as he's doing in your life. Don't worry about everyone else. And these two natures are continually arriving in our lives. We don't know if they eat the uh, tree of life one day, next day we go back to the, uh, the old nature. We've got to make a decision saying, I had that nature before. I'm not going back. It didn't do me any good. I need to gravitate to the tree of life that I may be expressing the image of him. Why do we fall short of his grace? Why do we fall short what God is doing in our life? Sometimes it's the company we keep. Mm -mm. I think I'll go see Harry tomorrow. Sometimes wisdom comes to build a house. If they are not of the same nature, a lot of times we can get caught up speaking negative things. We gravitate to that because it feeds the flesh. But we are spirit. We got to feed on things of the spirit of God. Is everyone okay out there? And that's what we're continually battling, even today, in our two types of nature. Unruly or good. Good fruit or bad fruit. Character. And we've got to come to a place in life 
Because judgment begins in the house of God. God is going to bring a word that's going to cut not the tree. He's going to deal with the root. If I planted a mango tree and it didn't have any fruit and I waited 50 years, something wrong. I'll have to keep buying mangoes. What I'm saying this morning, the problem is not the tree. Everything that is in the root system will gravitate up into the vine, then it goes to the branch. If there's no sap going to the branch, you will never ever produce fruit. Even a banana grower will tell you, you plant a banana tree, I'm going somewhere with this, but you know around the mother tree, they got a lot of suckers. And them suckers, the short plants, banana, they feed on the mother, the mother tree. But that mother's got to give birth to the next fruit. So what the farmer does, he sends a bloke out with a cane knife and he clears all the little suckers and he'll leave either one or two to give it a lifespan that this tree will grow and it will produce the next crop. If we're gravitating to the tree of knowledge of good and evil all the time, what you're doing, you're stifling out the life of the word of God that is within you. So the spirit of God is like the cane, a uh, bloke with the cane knife. He comes now to trim the tree, get all the dead wood away, because it doesn't value anything to hold on to dead wood. Dead wood could speak about everything in our lives. Everything that is not profiting you, God's now coming, he's pruning the tree that you may bear much fruit. So that old character, you can't have... Yes, yeah, sometimes I, I, I'll have to say this in all honesty. Sometimes I work in two characters. If things are not working out, panic button start. When we first got married, we had six kids. I never passed the Selena did. It wasn't rosy. I'm here trying to get her like that, stretching out the punch uh, past the Selena. Honey was young, got married, and the pastor's in the middle, uh, holding us both like that. See, the bad nature can creep up to make a storm. The enemy wants you to feel the effects of the storm. But how do I get out of that? I need to feed on the tree of life. I need to feed my spirit man on the things of God. This might be a simple message this morning, but a lot of us are keeping company and it's, it's doing damage to our walk. It's not I've got anything against people, but Paul says, have no dealing with the unfruitful person because he can inject his poison or his character upon you and me and we become back to that old nature. Who's ever felt that? Yeah. I remember one bloke come and visit me one day and I was, I was counselling. At the end, I think... I needed him to cancel me because I was going down in a downer. See, words can bring you down to that lower level and it can affect you. So this morning, we should be that fragrance. What sort of fragrance are you diffusing in the midst of your family or your loved one or your friends around you that they may gravitate to what you have is life? But if we keep... Uh, speaking ill of one another, that spring of bitterness causes the uproot in our lives and we begin to speak it. So what we're doing, we are damaging that person's life to go on into life. 
And I really believe in the book of in the book uh, of Matthew. Just turn there this morning. It's more of a, I want to share in a way that we understand that we are fighting these natures that are within us. How do I deal with it? Well, I always say this. If you can get more of the word in you, the sweeter you become. If you don't spend time in the word, you can't feel the effects of life flowing through you because you're not connected to the word that he may pour his life into you. You're like a channel. You're like a pipe. And if, if you're not getting fresh water every day, well, you're going to drink dirty water every day. We've got to learn to discipline our bodies and our time in the season. This is the season that God is looking for fruit. And if we're not connected beside the river of life, it speaks about it in the book of Revelation. On either side there are 12 trees, fruit, bearing fruit every month. Sometimes I was flat out bearing fruit for one year. And the question we must ask ourselves, where are we situated in life? Are I connected to the cornerstone or do I just want to have an, a relationship with Jesus when I feel like it? Uh, well, I'll go to church this Sunday. I feel I haven't been for three months. It's not going to work in this space. God needs you to be on the operation table right now that God can deal with you and I that he may inject you with life. No good being drip feed every Sunday or come one Sunday, next Sunday I'll be right. I don't have to come. No, no, it's commitment. I am committed to this journey. I'm willing to lay my, my life down that Christ may dwell in me. And I want to encourage you this morning. Put time and value on the time you spend in the house of God. The only way that me and Pastor Selena grew, we were disciplined, did all that, played up and did all things wrong. But you know what? I never forsake the house of God. I never I, I got involved in cleaning. I got involved in studies, Bible and all that. There were good days, eh, Pastor Sess, eh? We had cell groups. We had everything going for us. We went to it. But now in this feast that we're facing, there's so many excuses today that we depart from the tree of life and we give more entertainment or more time out there. And the Word of God says it doesn't profit you anything. Another word that has no weight, no value in it. We are now seeing, it's sad to say, with this COVID-19 and all the things you will hear on the news, but I'm hearing there's a sound that is coming out of Zion. The church is beginning to rise with healing in its wings, you know. We begin to go upwards in the things of God. What, what the earth is going through, what the lower natures are going through, that we should be excited what God is doing in your life and my life. We are the trees of righteousness. We are bearing the fruits and character of the Lord Jesus. So we must have something to give to a world that is dying. Why does all these things spring up? Well, okay, I'll show you in Matthew 3. And it says this. Verse 10, it says, And even now the axe is laid at the root of the tree. Therefore, every tree that does not bear good fruit, it's cut down and thrown in the fire. The word of God. Judgment begins in the house. If you're not bearing fruit in this season of tabernacle to go into the feast of God, he said, my word is at the root. 
there's a problem in the root system. You're not bearing my character. I do not know you because you have not my fruit. See, we've got to ask ourselves in life if we are serving, which tree are we serving? The tree of life or the tree of knowledge of good and evil where all the nasty things are. Are we drawing from that uh, character? Are we drawing from that system all the time? Why ain't I moving forward, past Anthony? Why am I bogged down all the time? You haven't, you haven't connected to the cornerstone, which is he. He has been tested, proven, that you and I may be anchored in the things of God this morning. The only way you're going to bear fruit in the things of God giving over to the word of God giving over to the things of God oh, you can count on me pastor I'll be a prayer I'm a man of battle I'll be there for study, studies nights you know what I say to people now I said if don't come home on don't come to my place Monday night don't come Wednesday night pastor Selena's doing prayer we got to fix up the times in our, in our busy schedule. When I'm weary or thin, the word gives me strength. We are now going through the narrow entry or this entry into the city of God. And the word that now, everything is laid out the root. When you look at the root system, it can either be sweet or bitter. It, when, you, when you look at it in true life, if you ate a lemon and it's bitter, you spit it out. But you get a sweet orange, you'll feast on that orange and say, man, I wouldn't mind having another one. That was very sweet. And the word of God says, taste and see that the Lord is good. God wants you to begin to taste the fruit of the Spirit. Too long we have given tension to the old bad nature and our fruit becomes bitter. You ever seen a bitter person? Well, I was one of those persons. You know, before I met him. Have you still got a bit of bitterness? Yeah, God's still working on me. But if you hang around a bitter person every day, you start to pick up their language. You start to hate everyone who walks down the street. How does that happen? Well, I've learned on the way in my journey like I said, when you go visit people and they haven't got the same nature, you know what they do? They bring you into their scene. They throw that net over you and you become partakers of that very thing that they're speaking. But pastor wants to challenge you this morning. When you visit a friend, family or whatever, don't get caught up in this time and season with things that are, can bring damage to you and I. I say to people, in this feast, this time and season, God's moving, don't touch, the, uh, don't touch the smooth. The anointing was on the outside. The prophets were anointed of God. But now the glory dwells within. We're going for glory, speaks of character, maturity. Don't let anyone come and spoil your tree. Set boundaries. Sometimes you've got to set boundaries and say, I have stayed too long in this place. I have dwelt too long on the mountain down below too long. I'm gathering where I shouldn't be gathering. 
please don't get me wrong, take this in love this morning. If you're gathering with people that have got bad influence or bad nature, surely 90% of a lot of us as Christians, we fall out. Don't let anyone inject something that is not of a good nature because you can be ending up like them. That's why Pastor said we are still contending with two trees today. These natures, these bad influence, all these things we are contending with. So we've got to make adjustment. We've got to allow the fertilizer, the word of God to come and fertilize our what? Not the tree, the root. The root. The root is the problem in our life. So the word is coming to deal with the root. You're the trees of life. And God is saying, Pastor Anthony, I'm coming to deal with your root problem. I'm coming to deal with your character. I'm coming to deal with everything that is not of a good nature. Because you can't bear bad fruit. Good trees only bear good fruit. Because they're in what? Good soil. They're in the word of God. And everything that is in the word only can produce goodness. Are you excited? Amen. That's what God is doing. He's shaking your tree. He's shaking my tree. Saying I'm going to deal with this. In this feast. We give too much, we give too much to the world. We attach ourselves with the unfruitful person and what they're doing by time you're walking with the same nature then. Oh, that's a bit hard, Pastor. You gotta make a choice. I gotta make a choice. Pastor Selena's gotta make a choice in our household and everything like that. For someone to come into life, you've got to be an example, as Paul says. Set a fragrance in the midst of people that are perishing. So you're the lifesaver. You come into a house that is broken up, a house that is in torment. You're coming in with the fragrance of the king, and you're setting a fragrance in the house that they may get a whiff of life. You can't experience life if you're not carriers of life. Hey, say, say, Pastor, getting through this morning. We have the fragrance of Christ in you, the hope of glory. He said, now diffuse it. In other words, open up the fragrance of the Lord. You're the alabaster box with the fragrance. We've got to let the perfume. He's the sweetest one I know. There's no perfume like Jesus. There's no one can make a fragrance like he smells the freshness. Hallelujah. We have that fragrance, a hope of glory, Christ in me. But if there's not enough word in me, I'm going to be an old grappy old man. My kids say to me, sometimes dad get crabby. But at the end of the day, we should be bearing the fruits of the Lord in season and out of season. But the word of God says now the axe is at the root. He not pruning the tree no more. He's going after the root system. And a lot of us, sad to say in the church, we are so, uh, uh, have that old nature, don't want to change. And God says the season is to change now. The feast is on, uh, upon the church. You heard Pastor Selena say the other week, there's not going to be no more delays. If you're not a millionaire now, don't worry about the world's not going to give you the million. God is going to give you what you have sown into the vineyard of the Lord. God can give you a million tomorrow. People are chasing dreams, pretty rainbows. What that song mum used to sing all the time? I'm chasing pretty rainbows. I can't sing it, but mum Purcell used to sing that. 
Shake that voice too. Yeah. Mum. A lot of us are chasing pretty rainbows. You know that gold lotto thing that shoots over there? There's a pot of gold over there. It ain't going to work. But I tell you, there's a place where you can invest. will never run dry. The wells are overflowing. It's in the kingdom of God. Whatever people try to do with the dreams and vision, God says, now I'm in the forefront. Whatever people say, gossip about the church or the school, whatever, God says, I'm now in the midst of her. If God is for us, who can be against us? If we gravitate to life, we only increase in life. But if our time spent at tables or wherever we go to get a feed or flesh, you can pick it up anywhere. You can pick it up in the street. Somebody will pop up and say, oh, we have them mob going over there. They got more news than the newspaper. But God's army is rising up. They're setting a fragrance in the midst of adversity. When a world is dying and perishing, what has the church got to do? Got to stand and arise and says, now we are like Joel's army. Who can be against us when the Lord of hosts is going before the church? He has quit the church to set a fragrance over the earth. Families that are perishing. That's the heart of the king. He moved with compassion. What are we saying at the dinner tables? What are we saying in our gathering? Oh, I can't stand that lad. And he in church, and you're supposed to be brother. Oh, I don't like that church. They talk about uh, the Feast of Tabernacle. Our duty is to be an example, Paul says, to others that are perishing. If you're not sharing light, and you're sharing everything else, and you're speaking against dreams and visions of the Lord, if you're speaking idle words that are, have no weight, is it good to visit family? Yeah. No one's saying it's wrong. It's good to visit a friend. No. But don't let your conversation be on something that is building life in you. Don't feed off the old nature. I think I'll have another cuppa. It's getting sweeter. And Harry's caught up in it, and by the time you've got to carry him out. Sometimes you can, you know when you hear negativity? It, it drains you. That's why you need a positive on the battery. Cut the old nature, put off the old man, that I may put on the new man. His DNA is all good. You can't get anyone gooder than him. So if I'm connected to the one who carries goodness and richness of life, why depart from that tree of life? Why, why cut it one Sunday, next Sunday, don't see it? Because we don't have the spirit of endurance. So Pastor, this might be a short message, but it's vital. You're going to have to make a choice for you and your household. Joshua said, for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Sometimes God now saying, Pastor Anthony, you know, I've got a lot of friends. I had a lot of friends when I was out there. They couldn't get over it. Hey, Mum, we used to be the tree of knowledge of good and evil, do all evil things. I had my brother-in-law say, come to the window, just have a, have a joint, and then you can go to church. Well, Harry was stoned in church. Oh, come on. But you might be weighed down with bitterness, anger, jealousy. No point in the finger. But if I and my wife 
as a, as a couple, we had to, I remember that day, it was funny, very funny. Uncle Lou and, Anna, and Dad Purcell. You know, Dad, hey, you just think, he come and walk and to the beach after the carton. She said, hey, Edwards, go tell Dad he can't bring it in here. Well, I tell you, if you know my father-in-law, right, you couldn't talk to Dad, he'll tell you straight off. And I'm like that. And he's full of the Lord, eh? He, he's shaking like that. And I'm walking like, go on, go, tell Dad. And I'm looking at Dad, he told me, Dad, yeah, well, what? And Uncle Irwin, they're standing there on his guitar, Uncle Irwin. Dad, you just can't come here and drink in the house. Yeah, that's all right. I'm going down the back of the beach. I didn't know what to say. You know, I don't know the beach. But I had to, I had to think my father-in-law. And you know what? After we went on and been an example, you know, Dad, I had the privilege to lead him to the Lord. That's why God brought you in here. You are the fragrance to your family. But if you get caught up with everything else, you know what your fragrance is doing? You're decreasing, and that nature is increasing. See? Never get away from that. You've got to get away from that old tree, that old nature, because it's got bad fruit, bad language. But we're in a season now, God says, I'm bringing a new language. We're going to speak healing. We're going to. I said to Shelton, I said, Shelton, I nearly died, eh? I, I had my plans for my funeral. I'm telling him, yeah, and I'm coming to church. See that bad night? I said, Oh, Shelton, you got to sing this song at my funeral. I'm telling him my funeral report. And he's going to preach the word. See how quick he comes in? comes in so quick that we're unaware of it. And we can be like that in the midst of people. We can be unaware that we're running one another down and by the time you go home, that other lad who entrapped us, say, I thought he was a Christian. They know you by your fruits. So God says, now there's no fruit on the tree. Judgment is coming to the root of your system. Judgment begins in the house of the Lord. This church should be packed. But what fragrance are you sending out there? What signal? We're not going to live on. We're not going to live uh, uh, in the flesh if, if we're after the things of the spirit, spirit to spirit. I'm injecting life into another vessel that needs hope. And I don't think Susan and mine, we, we lost a young man in our community. Very sad. Won't go into details. But where is the church? I'm too busy at the table gossiping. I'm exchanging my views about everything else. And life is perishing. They said by the end of this COVID-19, they said they might have an, a fix. But you know what? We already got it. He is in the midst of the church. When everything is failing, we must return back to the Creator. God invested everything into you and I to be the trees of righteousness. He gave his all that you may diffuse a fragrance of him to a dying world. What is your answer going to be? What is my answer going to be? Oh, you know, Pastor, oh, you know, Lord, I was just too busy doing my own thing. I got caught up with everything else. I went to sleep on the things of God. That's why we're perishing. You know, and I just went along and, I, and that's what life was all about. No. Stop. Analyze everything around you now and saying, am I doing the things of God? Am I a labor in this harvest?
the most important harvest we're facing. But the word of God says the laborers are few. Like Pastor Manny was throwing out the, you know, sometimes we could be at the sports day for these kids to show them love. But we've got too much time doing everything else. Are there any kids that are going to school? No, you're a fragrance to them. You're a fragrance. Show a bit of love. Hey, I've got that many grandkids at the school. I've got so many olds in my pocket. Hey, Granddad, you got 50 cents? I want to get a ice block. Another one came. Hey, Granddad, can you get me an ice block? That's why I've got to make sure I've got a bit of silver in my pocket. Here comes Santa Claus. Jingle along, jingle along. But what are we doing? What are we doing to invest in the kingdom? I thank the Lord for this church. Good tithe givers. It's not, I don't want your money. God wants to use that to finance this next move of God. Thank Rick and Joslyn, Nathan. Thank the tithe givers. Truly, I really thank you. That's a good DNA. A good fruit. A giver. Long-suffering. Patience. Fruit of the Spirit. But we gravitate to something that will never profit us. So this morning, trees, every tree which does not bear good fruit, it's cut down and into the fire. God sends fire on the earth, but are we ready for it? The ultimate question, fire is to refine a people. But are we ready? Oh, you know, Pastor, I'm ready. That's what the ten virgins said. Five were wise and five were foolish. We've got to speak it as it is. If the axe is going now to the root, we've got to ask ourselves, what are we, what are we carrying as a container? Because the Bible says they shall know you by your fruit. Fruit, it speaks of character. Hey, I love being around Father. You know, he speaks about faithfulness. You know, I'm gravitated to that kind of nature because we have the same DNA. I love being around John. He loves giving. I love people that can sing a worship song. Good nature, I'm drawn by that because I want to develop that. We are the trees of life. But if we keep gravitating to things that don't profit us, we lose out. You know, they said in America today that the fires that are happening, cities are getting burnt. We got the uh, COVID-19. India now has peaked to 97,000 people that are affected in India. England's going up again, hearing all the bad news. And you know what? People still don't fear the great I am. They don't know how to come and just say, Lord, I thank you. Young kids, unsounded minds, hearing voices. And we as a church, I blame myself too, we are caught up with so many things. We're battling a generation that now is mentally broken down, families are broken up, and the church don't know how to give God a couple of hours to break through and pray. See, if he said he was here at 12 o'clock, I reckon we'd be here at 10 o'clock. We've got to change our times and everything. Be faithful. Be faithful in the little things, and I'll give you much more. I know this is not right over the top sermon, but I pray this morning 
that only righteousness can produce righteous fruit. Righteousness will diffuse the enemy in the midst. I mean, Pastor Selena, you know, it doesn't matter what people say about the church now or the school. He's gone before us. <laughs> Who can be against us? You're speaking from a tree to be an overcomer. It is only given to the overcomers at the end. You read the book of Revelation, you can, you can be in my kingdom. You can be my son. You're an overcomer. God's not looking for one day wonders no more. Sad. He's looking for his sons. <laughs> sons that will be separate. Sons that will stand up and say, I don't want to be partakers of that nature again. I'm going towards life. I'm drawing to him this morning. Amen. While the church is still asleep, there's a people that are rising in the storm. Be still and know that he is God. We're going to cross over. I'm crossing over. I don't want to be a part of the old nature. I don't want to be a lazy servant no more in the house of my God. I've got people come. Hey, Pastor, can I do a bit of this? Certainly. Oh, Pastor, I might clean the kitchen. I might do this. But I'm a, I'm a son in the house of my God. Allow the Spirit of God to cut that nature. There's a world that is dying. And this thing is manifesting over the earth. Church, hear this this morning. You can sense the demonic areas. But when you walk in life and you diffuse the king in the midst of all adversity, that thing's got to stay silent. Caleb said, when they came back with the bad report, Caleb said these powerful words, and we must understand. He said, no, we are more than able to go up. There's no weakling in this army. They will sell all to be an example for this generation. Sometimes it's got to empty our pockets. Sometimes it's good to give a little kid a love. And everything in the midst of adversity. Last year my dad passed away. No one told me. They ring me and they said, the father passed away. My sister rang me. But does that cause me to stop? I'm going after life. If I got to lose everything to gain him, it's worth it. Never was told. My sister rang me, stepsister said, you know your father passed away. I only met my dad once. But do I hold that against him? No. Because I can't afford to stop the river of life flowing in me. That's why every day I say, I just thank you, Lord. I thank the Lord for the building. When we face an adversity, people come against you. You just say, thank you, Lord. And that's all we can do, church. Every one of us have lost loved ones. But I tell you what, the best thing for that hurts, unforgiveness, draw closer and you become sweeter. Draw to the cornerstone. Because everything in the cornerstone, he created you. And in that cornerstone, draw to him.
that you may receive life. So this morning, not a big sermon, revelation, but what fragrance are you sending out there? Are you sending a fragrance that would bring them into life? The Word of God says a man can gain the whole world, but if he loses his soul, that's it. Allow God to bring that no good nature in your life and my life. Allow the word to knock it out. That you may be a fruitful boy. I even say to myself, question myself, was I a fragrance to my dad? But see, I had to be a dad to my own kids. And I'm learning. So I say to the church today, what is important? Spending time with an unfruitful vine or staying connected to the vine, which is Jesus. So this morning, I just want to leave that. We have got much to think and examine ourselves. Saying, am, am I really doing the Lord's work? So why don't we stand and thank him this morning for everything. Is the singers up, please? Um, that song a miracle I really believe there are people here this morning it's a grieving and it's hard sometimes to let it go but he only wants to replace that with joy those that are just hanging on to the strength you know what the answer to that that God wants to strengthen you what are you going to do in life God is saying to a lot of you you need to make choices for the good as they sing this song I challenge you to come